Breaking news at 9 a.m., but not necessarily a surprise. The Denver Broncos are parting ways with head coach Vic Fangio. And this all comes on the heels of the Broncos' fourth loss in a row, ultimately ending their season yesterday against the Chiefs. Let's get straight to Broncos insider Troy Rank. And Troy, you predicted this was coming, but the Broncos certainly didn't waste any time on the decision. Yeah, when you make a decision like this, you have to get the next coaching search moving quickly. And it's just a result of pro sports. You know, Vic Fangio was respected by players. I don't know that he was necessarily liked. But other than having a good defense, there was no way to defend him. Katie and Eric, 19-30 and 30 overall record, average 10 losses per season. And really what doomed him, 5-13 and 13 in the AFC West. That is the third worst winning percentage ever in the mm. AFC West. So you can't survive that. And you also look at the fact that at 7-6, and six, the entire season was in front of them, and they lost four straight games, including their 13th straight to the Chiefs yesterday. So in aggregate, it was just too much for Vic Fangio to overcome, despite the fact George Payton liked working with him. Peyton realized that Broncos country, this organization is ready for a reboot, ready for a change. Troy, it seems like the players did have some respect for Fangio. When these players go clean out their lockers today, how do you think this will affect them heading into the offseason? Yeah, I mean, defensively, guys really appreciated the way he put them in position to succeed, Eric. But the reality is the results aren't there. Guys are tired of losing. Do you realize this stat? Over the past six years, two teams have missed the playoffs during that time. The Broncos and Jets. You're now grouped with the Jets. I mean, Justin Simmons started his press conference yesterday by apologizing to Broncos country. So here's the issue with pro sports. It's about accountability and responsibility. Had they kept Fangio, how do you look at the players in the locker room and say, when you don't play well, you get benched, or if you don't play well, you get cut. But our coach says it's the offensive coordinator's fault, the special teams coordinator's fault, and his quarterback's fault. You can't have it that way as the head coach. You are the chief strategist, the record falls on your doormat, and ultimately that's what got Fangio fired, and that lack of ability to clock management, inability to ever win a challenge. There was just too many issues. So players, I don't think, will miss Fangio in that way because of the losing. They respected him, but most players I've talked to over the last several weeks anticipated a change. Accountability for sure. So looking ahead now, do you know of any early contenders for the head coaching job? Yeah, again, George Payton is very detailed, and it's part of the reason he liked Coach Fangio is because George Payton, it's nothing for him to work 80 hours, 90 hours a week. That's who he is. He's a grinder. So expect this to be a comprehensive, and as he said in a statement, Katie, a collaborative search. That's what he's built in the building. He's energized the building with his good draft and collaboration, giving ownership to people and trusting them to come back to him with good information. So some of the candidates include Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator for Green Bay, Doug Peterson, who won a Super Bowl with Philadelphia and was out last season, is another candidate. Leslie Frazier, perhaps, in, uh, with Buffalo, the defensive coordinator. But I would keep an eye on Doug Peterson, Dan Quinn, and Nathaniel Hackett. Those are the early front runners, but it's going to be an exhaustive search. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the first order of business for whoever takes the role as head coach here? Get a quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yep. I mean, listen. They have to get better quarterback play. And that, in fairness to Fangio, that's part of the reason he's not the coach anymore. But he had a way to nine wins this year, if not ten, because of their easy schedule. So I don't want to say it's just on the quarterback. A quarterback makes it much easier to contend. They camouflage more blemishes than Revlon. So they need to decide what is their long-term strategy at quarterback. Do they go get an Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson if they become available through trade? Yeah. Or do you look at a fallback plan like Matt Ryan or Kirk Cousins? Or do you go in the draft, Eric and Katie, for a Matt Corral or a Kenny Pickett? They have to address the position in a meaningful way. I think initially I know it will be trying to trade for a veteran, but if that's not possible, then you have to look at the draft and find the guy who's going to lead this team for years to come. Well, hey, Troy, before you go, we know how it went last time we traded for a veteran. It was some of the most exciting years in Broncos country ever. So that's I'm just gonna I'm just going to put it out there. Throw it out. Yeah, and we want more Peyton Manning and less Joe Flacco, Case Keenum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Troy, thanks for all your work, man. You're the best. You got it, guys. Take care. See ya.